uh, an amendment to the bylaws regarding kind of preparation for these meetings. You know, they're two days or three-day meetings. Um, I think something that would really help these meetings is kind of thoughtful preparation of ideas before the meeting that can be then debated at the meeting. So the, the issue is, um, in the bylaws, position papers will be developed identifying areas needing more research and funding, and these papers will be circulated to all committee members before the research meeting. So if we do have a research meeting or if we do have a task, we will have some intellectual work done before it so that we can all be thinking about the issues, not just at the meeting, before the meeting, and then hopefully after the meeting, something done with that. I find the best meetings I go to is when there's a lot of work done before it, and that then you have some opportunity to really move the field forward about the areas that are needing possibly more guidance. Michael. Yeah. Um, I've obviously, uh, as same as the rest of the committee, I've sensed a lot of frustration from the uh, patient advocates. Um, and, you know, historically, this disease has been uh, difficult to diagnose. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, suggested etiologies which haven't, uh, haven't been developed and matured. But I think now, um, at last, there's a possibility of um, defining a viral etiology through XMRV. Now, as we discussed this morning, that may or may not mature to the point where it's confirmed and well adopted, but I think there's certainly some great hope here for many years. And so I would have thought that this is an opportunity um, to serve the community better by trying to get more funds for us to meet to update the community, including the patient groups, on what's really happening with XMRV. So I guess I'm surprised that our budgets are so constrained that they cannot respond to new developments like the exciting XMRV uh, story. So I guess I'm a point of information to wonder perhaps, um, is there no possibility that given the excitement generated by the Whitmore Pedersen Institute research that we can't get more funds to, to have more frequent meetings to update the community on, on their progress as well as um, other groups that are now engaged in XMRV research. I think it, it's important, obviously, on any disease that there's a um, reprioritization based on, on new data as it comes out. So it's a plea for more funds for us to meet more frequently, at least, to see where the XMRV story goes to. And I'm hearing more the gist of a recommendation than a charter issue per se, because if it's XMRV today, you know, maybe it's ABCD six months from now. You know, I mean, this is the nature of science. It's evolutionary, rarely revolutionary. Um, and I would suggest and submit that perhaps that's a, more in the recommendation domain than either charter or even bylaw uh, domain. Let me, let me add to that, Wanda, because uh, I don't know what the right format is, but it would seem to me uh, in the various organizations that I'm uh, uh, members of and participate in, the travel issue is universally true. So more and more people are exploring the webinar, the electronic value of that. How would we go about actively doing that for this group? I would be delighted to meet every month if, sitting in front of a little camera talking on the computer for half a day, then have to come to Washington four times a day and be gone three days out of the week and so forth and so on. And I think that's logistically true for many of us. I, I don't think you can completely take the place of face-to-face, -face, but, uh, but augmenting a lot of subcommittee work and a lot of the nitty-gritty uh, elbow grease work that needs to be done can be done by the electronic format. What, what would we have to do? Do, we make a, do I propose a recommendation that we examine that? Do we say we're going to start adding to that? How, does that? how do you go about it? Again, I think that could fit in the realm of recommendation. We've sort of poked around a little at webinar, but we've not really pursued it because it hasn't been clear that the committee, you know, would like us to go that direction. You know, we're just, we're the support for you. If you feel that webinaring, doing webinars would um, facilitate the work of the committee, then, you know, charging us with some exploratory report back for the fall meeting sort of thing, certainly something we can do. Um, 
you know, educating seminars and things to educate have been suggested, ways to educate providers, community, et cetera, have been in the prior recommendations. So, you know, this, that's the business of this committee. What are these targeted areas? You know, Madam Secretary, this is a critical issue for, and, you know, surface that as a recommendation. The research subcommittee meets about monthly anyway on mm -hmm. the telephone. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was leaning over asking Lenny about the idea of piloting it through the research subcommittee, and his comment was that it might have to be made public on the front end. And when we're talking about science, so if you do webinar, it's by definition public. If it's a full advisory committee meeting, it must be public. If the no, subcommittees that, that are ad hoc, if they are discussing ad hoc issues brought to that subcommittee, those that subcommittee work is subcommittee work. It is not in the public domain. Would there be a but it must be reported up and the outcomes of, of those discussions made public. Yeah, well, the, intent is, I, I, the intent of my question is not secrecy. The intent no, of, of my question not. is working out the mechanics of it. Uh, would there be any value in making a recommendation from your support office standpoint for the research subcommittee to try this and I mean, because they're, they're already meeting anyway? and pilot it to see if it works, if there's an added value to it as a, as a premise of uh, seeing if it worked for the entire committee, or is that you already know how to do it, you don't need us to... Yeah, I don't think it's necessary for a pilot, uh, but if you'd like it explored for full committee, I think that is something useful that, you know, it just puts it out there and allows us to take forward the case, <laughs> you know, we're going to need an additional $10,000 or, you know... Make I would make a recommendation, Chris, that we uh, actively explore the value and need for a webinar extra meeting in the 2011 year for the entire committee. Okay, and that's just going to be a recommendation to the secretary. Uh, We're not including that in bylaws or charter. Well, since that, I'm sure it costs money. Uh, and we've already spent all the money, I think, by making the recommendation to suggest that we would make it more cost efficient. How much does one of these meetings cost? $10,000, $5,000? Webinars? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, because we have to pay for the technology. Right. It's, it, it's somewhere like $10,000. i am not absolutely okay. sure. Some of my colleagues might know, but... I, I know. think we'll have time. Let's come back to that one, and yeah. we'll deal with the motion on the floor, which, which, which concerns how many days and how many times we, we meet a year. So I'm, I'm going to ask that we keep discussion to that aspect at the moment until we've resolved that, that, that motion. Susan? Should there be anything in the bylaws about recommendations about how often subcommittees should meet? Um, or on the phone, telephone? Uh, we, we, we can look into that whether we want to formalize it. Whether we want to formalize it or not, I, I, I'm not sure. But back to the day thing, I think the concerns are that a, that we meet at least twice a year, and, and B, that those are, are at least, that we don't lose days, so that, so that we don't go to a twice a year, one day meeting schedule. So by changing the language slightly in the charter, and we change not more than two times a year to not less than twice a year, and for four days, by not less than four days, that locks in at least a, a potential three one two two four z well it doesn't it's it four days i mean what if we keep that a little bit open because who knows you know what would occur in a, a couple of years maybe that, that, that's my point Len. if we put not less than it doesn't stop us growing exactly. it just stops us shrinking exactly so I, i'm for all that not less than two times a year yeah and, and I, the not less was also meant to apply to the to the four days and no, that allows not less us than four days. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So whether we, whether we put, we put not less than twice. Put it in twice, just to make sure it's sure. clear. So no less than twice a year, and for no less than four days. And is that a motion on the table? That was a friendly. That was a friendly amendment to your motion. Oh, my motion. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> we had a, we had a motion and a second, didn't we? It was a it was a long time ago. Gee, that's one I didn't table. Okay. okay. All right. I'm, I'm not sure we're calling the question on, though, Jason. Uh, well, I thought we had a discussion. I just want to try and move it along. Is it on the not less than two days and not, and for not no less than two days and no less uh, for no less than twice a year and for no less than four days? Do you need a second or is it already? 
it was a friendly amendment to Lenny's motion. If both he and whoever seconded his motion, then we can. I'll apply the call the question to that. Can I? All those in favour? Opposed? Motion carried.